Hey everybody, Jeffrey here, and KO is trying to warn us of what the future of Valorant's lore will look like. If you guys didn't know, KO came from an alternate timeline in Valorant where the only reason he existed was to kill all Radiance. And the reason why he had to kill all Radiance is because the Radiance were nearly successful in wiping away humanity from existence. Welcome to the Radiant Wars. Today I'm going to explain why we should be really careful with the Radiance and what events need to happen if they want to band together and start another war but this time in our timeline. Chapter one, the Radiant Wars. Okay, so before we get into how likely the Radiant Wars will happen for us or how things would have to play out to make them want to wipe humanity off the earth, let's talk about the Radiant Wars that KO fought in, the battle to save Earth. I talked about this quite a bit in my KO lore video, so if you haven't seen that yet, go ahead and check that out after watching this video. But anyways, we do know that for whatever reason, Radiants banded together and formed a literal Radiant Army. With each battle on Earth, the humans were losing. No matter what the humans did and the combined powers of all of the country's militaries, they were just unable to stop the advancing Radiant Armies, which were led by their Empress, Queen Reyna. Whether it was through politics or show of force and fear, Reyna was the leader of the Radiant Army, destroying towns, which led to cities, which led to entire countries. Nothing was stopping them. Then, deep in a lab, Humanity's last hope was just created. Chapter 2, Humanity's Last Stand. Kill all your opponents, or KO, was created and his sole purpose was to negate Radiant's abilities and ultimately kill them. Every kit in his arsenal was meant to give KO an advantage when fighting against these Radiant-fueled beings. And other humans joined together like Sova as well. But even with humanity's new weapon, KO, the enemy Radiants were still too powerful. You have almost near godlike powers like Sage, Sky, Astra, and of course the Empress Reyna. Their Astra doesn't protect reality. She destroys worlds. I would know. It is strange, Sage. Where I'm from, you're no medic, only a weapon. I've seen what the enemy Sky becomes. Deal with her now. Trust me, another Reyna. I killed her in the war. I'll kill her again. But after Reyna killed Kao's closest friend, Brimstone, the Radiant Killer robot, fueled with revenge, managed to find her, and against all odds, was able to once and for all stop Reyna's reign of terror. Once Reyna fell, the rest of the Radiants did as well, and humanity was saved. After completing his mission, Ko took a super advanced teleporter to our timeline after he already saved his. But things were different here. We currently work alongside Radiants and are allied with them in stopping the threat of Mirror Earth. So, so far, there is no such thing as a Radiant War here in our timeline. But could there be? What things would have to happen to make the Radiants want to try and kill off all humans on Earth and possibly beyond? Well, there are really only two possible scenarios that I think can actually make this happen. One being a defensive scenario where the Radiants are on the defensive and another being a offensive scenario where the Radiants just want to use their power to take over the world. Chapter three, fighting for our lives. Let's talk about why the Radiants would want to start a war if they were trying to defend themselves. First off, it's a fact that Radiants feel oppressed on Earth. Not all of them, but a lot of the Radiants feel like they're outcasts to society. So they already feel like they don't belong. Secondly, I feel like the misuse or abuse of Radiantite might lead them to getting upset as well. After all, Radiantite is the key to their powers. So let's say, for example, Kingdom destroys more land searching for more Radiantite, or rules or sanctions are made into law about the use and distribution of Radiantite. This may upset them further. And a tragic yet possible scenario that would have to have all the Radiants band together on the defensive is if they were being hunted down. What if Mirror Earth is taken care of and beaten and nobody's attacking us from there anymore? It could be possible that governments all over the world wouldn't see a need for Radiance anymore to fight back Mirror Earth and would start seeing them 
as a possible threat to them. With enough anti-Radiant political media, it could be true that globally, Radiance could be seen as a new threat. And if that agenda got enough support globally, the Radiance would be forced to band together to fight for their lives. It's a huge rule in war to not let your enemy know they're next because they will do everything in their power to stay alive. And if the entire world looks like they're against them, the only option the Radiance have is to fight back and win for their survival. Chapter four, planting the seeds of war. Now let's talk about my other scenario where Radiance around the world decided they wanted to go on the offensive and dominate the planet simply because they have the powers to do so. So firstly, there would have to be a motive to band together as much Radiance as they possibly can to surprise attack humanity with the hopes of winning because Radiance are severely outnumbered. I think the same thing as Chaos Timeline will be true in this scenario is that Reyna will be the one to lead the Radiant Army. I think she will be the one that most likely will start planting the seeds of lies into other Radiant's heads about the false plans of humanity wanting to wipe out the Radiance. The art of lying and deception would have to be played at an expert level to convince so many Radiants that they are viewed as an enemy, but keep it a secret to all the humans. It's basically like the defensive scenario earlier, but without the humans actually viewing Radiants as a threat. This is a lie, but it's going to be hard to convince every Radiant that humans are bad and they're the enemy. One thing I found odd is that there are some Radiance KO never mentions about the Radiant Wars in his timeline. He never mentions anything about fighting Omen, Jet, Phoenix, and Yoru. So what I'm thinking is that those four agents I just messaged probably died before KO was made and manufactured to fight the Radiance or those four agents I just mentioned were never fighting with the Radiance. Maybe they didn't want to battle or maybe they were fighting alongside the human. So either they died before KO was made or they never fought. Omen used to be human and has close ties with a lot of humans on the protocol. The only reason he is a Radiant is because that's what Sage had to do to literally save his life. Jet also likes a lot of the humans and she's really easygoing and full of life. Probably not convinced that humans are bad. Phoenix, same thing, full of life and likely won't believe that they're being hunted down. And that leaves us Yoru. I think Yoru is going to be the most important Radiant that Reyna must recruit for the sole reason of his rift walking abilities. Many, many assassinations of world leaders around the world can be carried out simply by your rift walking nearby or right behind one of them, tearing open a rift right behind them, pulling the trigger and disappearing into another plane of reality. It's the most foolproof and easy way to cause a vast amount of chaos in countries all around the world. If Reyna can convince Yoru early on that they need to strike first, to protect themselves, they will very likely win and beat humanity. With the combined forces of Yoru to Riftwalk, Sky to summon animal armies, Sage to heal and revive fallen radiance, and Astra to literally control the cosmos on the battlefield, all led by Queen Reyna, who just gets more and more powerful with each soul she consumes and other radiance around the world, they will probably win. I do feel like that this offensive scenario is a little less likely than the defensive scenario because so many things have to fall into play correctly for this to be pulled off. But that doesn't mean it's impossible. Chapter five, was KO right? So I think it would have to be a combination of a defensive and offensive strategy if the Radiants wanted to start a war in our timeline and win. There would have to be some level of oppression or at least the feeling of being outcast to alienate themselves, whispers of the humans planning on turning on the Radiants and wipe them out, and a strong leader to corral Radiants all over the world together with either lies or truths. And with some Radiants on the protocol just now starting to realize their full potential, I'm thinking about Sky and uh, Astra, for example, a Radiant War might happen happen again, but it literally all depends on how the humans treat the Radiant. Make them feel like they belong in society and don't give them any weird suspicions that we're planning to destroy them and wipe them off the earth. Because Radiants and humans can and should live together in harmony. But we all know that greed will ultimately play a role in probably an inevitable conflict in Valorant's lore. It's really up to who will mess up 
or strike first. Well, guys, what do you think would need to happen to start a Radiant War or which Radiants would be the most important to recruit on either side? If you enjoyed the video, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you think I deserve it. Now, with all that being said, Jippy out.